Hey Credit Warriors, Credit Shifu here. Now with the negative economic climate going on at the moment, your credit score may have taken a hit. Now in this video, we are gonna show you five steps to boost your credit score as fast as possible. And also do stick around to the end of the video, we're gonna have a contest to win a $50 Amazon gift card. So if you do wanna take part in that, watch till the end. Let's get started. So this is my Credit Karma dashboard and I'm gonna reference Credit Karma's six factors of credit throughout this video. FICO talks about five factors that affect credit. Uh, credit Karma just splits them into six, but it's the same thing. So when thinking of improving your credit score fast, we'll immediately be drawn to the so-called high impact factors that affects your credit, which is this top row. So first, let's talk about this one, payment history. And so step one is increase on-time payments. So I think you can easily get the gist of this. Basically, we want as many on-time payments as possible reported uh, to the credit bureaus each month. Now, this goes for credit cards, mortgages, utility bills. Um, all of these will report negative items, missed payments. If you miss a payment on any of these, they'll report to the credit bureaus. But uh, things like utility bills, they'll only report the missed payments uh, and they will not report the on-time payments. So there are kind of two aspects to it. Limiting missed payments or, you know, stopping missed payments altogether and then increasing the number of on-time payments that report to the credit bureaus. So to limit or stop missed payments, you should always pay on time, duh. But what you might not know is you do actually have up to 30 days um, after your due date to make that payment, okay? The uh, credit card or the mortgage company or whoever, they will not report a missed payment on your account until day 30. So basically, if you pay any time from your due date to like day 29, uh, basically it'll report your account as current uh, and report an on-time payment. So don't think, oh, if you miss your payment by say five days, don't think like, oh no, it's gonna get reported as a missed payment. I'll just not bother paying it because it's gonna get reported anyway. No, do pay it because as long as you're within those 30 days, actually it will be reported as an on-time payment. Now, late payments affect people with high credit scores in a much more extreme way uh, than people with already low credit scores. So if your score is around 750 or so, it could actually drop your score by up to 100 points. Not saying guaranteed 100 points, but up to that amount. If your score is down at like the 600 level, maybe it'll only drop your score by say 20 points down to 580 uh, if you miss a payment. But don't think that, you know, if you have a low score already, it's just, I'm gonna miss all my payments and it won't really matter. Well, it does matter still because the more missed payments you have, the bigger an impact it has on your score and it will be harder for you to build your score back up in the future. So just a moment ago, we talked about limiting missed payments. Now we're gonna talk about increasing the number of on-time payments on your credit report because the more on-time payments you have each month, the better an influence they will have and the faster your score can grow. So one way that you can increase on-time payments is simply to open a new credit card account, okay? So in building credit, credit cards are really the main tool. So you could open a new credit card account. If your credit score is too low, you could go for a secured credit card, or if you know someone who trusts you enough to add them to their account, you could get added as an authorized user, and that will then report to your credit uh, report as if it was your card. You could also consider alternative methods such as self-credit bill it used to be called Self Lender, now it's called Self Credit Builder. Uh, this is a service where you effectively loan yourself money uh, through this company, Self Credit Builder, and you pay yourself back each month and they will then report a minimum payment each month to the credit bureaus. Obviously you get charged a little bit of interest for you know, the service that they're providing. You could also consider another service called Experian Boost. Basically what happens is they link your bank account to their system, scan your monthly statements for utility bill payments, and you know, just a moment ago, we said that utility bills only report negative information. Well, they're scanning your bank account. Experian, just that one credit bureau, they will now report the positive information, the on-time payments, for utility bills, such as your electricity bill. So you can get that reported onto your credit report. Now I tested Experian Boost and in my experience, if your credit score is already high, it doesn't help you that much. But if you have a lower credit score, People who watched my video on this subject, uh, they did actually report some success with it. So you can see this person had an increase of 25 points 
13 points, this person an increase of 27 points. So you can see it does help, especially if your credit score is a bit low. Now with all of these, you do need to pay on time for them to work. There's no point in you hooking up Experian Boost if your utility bill payments are all more than 30 days late because that's just, you know, it does nothing. They're already going to be reported as missed payments anyway um, to your credit score, okay? Let's move on to the next step. Lower your credit utilization. Credit utilization is the percentage of credit used on your revolving credit accounts. And the most common type of revolving credit account is the credit card. Under 30% is good and under 10% is excellent. And you can look at it on each card, each card's utilization individually or as an average across all of your accounts. So what can you do to lower your credit utilization? Well, first of all, just spend less. That's the easy answer. Um, but if you don't want to spend less, what you can alternatively do is pay off your credit card before the end of your statement, before the statement closing date, because it's only gonna report to the credit bureaus the balance and thus the utilization on your statement closing date, right? If you pay it off before then, it will report less. If you have several credit cards, it's a good idea to spend it evenly across all of your cards instead of maxing out one. For example, if you have three cards, each with a $5,000 limit, and your spending is $3,000 per month, don't spend 2,000 on one card and 500 each on the other two. That would put you at 40% utilization on one of your cards. Instead, spend around $1,000 on each, then you'll have 20% utilization on each card. Now, if you can't do this because you only have one credit card, well, the answer to that could be just to get a new credit card, okay? And if your credit score is too low, you could, again, consider a secured card or being added as an authorized user to someone else's account. Alternatively, um, you can ask for a credit limit increase which if your spending remains the same, would also lower your utilization, okay? Because you're gonna be spending a smaller percentage of your overall credit limit. And this is also a good way uh, because it avoids a hard pull in general. Most banks will not give you a hard pull uh, if you do a credit limit increase, although you do want to check because some of them do. Now having a credit card maxed out completely, you know, like above 90% utilization, almost maxed, uh, can really hurt your score, okay? It can even cause it to drop by about 45 points. Now I currently have a card sitting at 92 percent utilization the balance is thirteen thousand eight hundred and three dollars out of a fifteen thousand dollar credit limit now i have the money to pay it off but i'm waiting for it to report to the credit bureaus to see what effect it has on my credit score basically i'm taking one for the team in the name of research you guys will see a video about that in the not too distant future next remove derogatory marks now derogatory marks are also a high impact item that affects your credit score and they include collections, tax liens, bankruptcies, and a few other things. Now, it is possible to get some of these items removed. Let's use collections as an example. Now, if you have a collection from the past few years, okay, a reasonably recent collection, you can try this with. Communicate with the collection company by mail, okay? Not on the phone, you write them letters so that you have evidence of what they are promising. And you're gonna see why this is important in just a moment. Offer to pay your debt for less than you owe, okay? They will have bought your debt from the bank or credit card company for much less than the actual dollar amount of that debt. So maybe you could offer half, they might negotiate with you a little bit and have a little bit of back and forth, but basically say to them that you will agree to pay it as long as they agree in writing to remove that collection from your credit report. If they do that, go ahead and pay it and the collection will most probably be removed. But if the collection is not removed, remember you have the evidence in writing that they said they would remove it in exchange for the debt being paid. So you can then take that letter and threaten them with legal action. And in the vast majority of cases, this will get the collection removed from your credit report. Now, obviously, I just described the process in very basic details. It is a bit more intricate than that. And there are different strategies for different types of debt. For example, medical debt has its own strategy. Um, I do have another video on credit repair that you guys can check out. I'll put it on the end of this video. And there's also a variety of books you can read. And you may want to, in the end, get the help of a professional credit repair service for this. There are a lot of them out there. Now, just one final point on collections as well. It's generally better not to pay older collections. Like if they're five years old or more, they're gonna come off your credit report in a couple of years anyway, within a couple of years, because remember, they only last seven years. And if you pay them, that actually brings them current and uh, means that they have more influence over your credit score than they otherwise would. So normally, if they're older than five years, it's best to just leave them. Next step, keep new credit applications to a minimum. 
So if you go and apply for a load of credit cards at the same time, um, that's gonna bring about a load of hard pulls, which is gonna affect your credit score, okay? Each hard pull drops your score by between two to six points, all right? On average, four points. So we would advise people who want to boost their credit quickly to keep new credit applications to a minimum, unless the application is directly for a card that's gonna help you get more on-time payments, increase your utilization, etc. And also be realistic about which applications uh, you do, okay? So let's say you have a credit score of 600, you wanna improve your credit, so you're gonna apply for the City Prestige, all right? Now, that card, it's a premium credit card, they're not gonna approve someone with a credit score of 600, so you basically wasted a hard pull. Then, you're probably gonna, you know, after being rejected for that card, you're probably gonna go and apply for a more realistic credit card, like the Capital One Platinum or something. So that's then two hard pulls um, that you've made to get one new credit account. So we really advise keep hard pulls to a minimum. Now I realize this is more about limiting damage to your credit score rather than boosting it. But obviously if you're going through all the other steps and you're trying as hard as you can to decrease utilization, increase on time payments, but then you go and get a load of hard pulls on your account, it's kind of sabotaging all the good work that you are doing. So do look out for this. Limit the amount of applications for new credit at this time. Okay, let's talk about our fifth and final step. And that is just wait. Now I know this sounds kind of contradictory because we are talking about increasing your credit score fast, but hear me out on this. So if you've taken the steps earlier in this video to heart, you should be set up for success. And at that point, it does become a waiting game where each month you accumulate more and more on-time payments on your credit report. You're lowering your utilization. Maybe negative items on your report are gradually falling off as they go out of date and you will get some results pretty soon. If you look at my hard pulls, for example, I have one here from July 2018, so that will expire and fall off my credit report next month. Then I will go down from four hard pulls to just three, and my score may increase by a point or two. So when you combine negative items expiring from your credit report with the other steps in this video, such as increasing the number of on-time payments each month, decreasing your utilization, and then just your average age of accounts gradually increasing month to month, you can really get some great results and you can see results within a month or two. Okay guys, so those are my five steps to improve your credit score fast. I know it may not cover every single situation, but it at least will give you some starting points on your road to improving your credit score. Now I did say we would have a contest to win a $50 Amazon gift card at the end of this video. So here are the rules. This is what you have to do. First, go to my Instagram, at the credit shifu, and please follow me, okay? You have to be following me to take part in this contest. Then have a look at my most recent photo, which is this, and just think of a caption, okay? This is basically a caption competition, so leave a comment below with your caption for the photo. Try and make it as funny as possible, and basically, whichever one makes me laugh the most, I will DM that person uh, to get your email to send you a $50 Amazon gift card. So do make sure you're regularly checking your Instagram DMs, direct messages, um, because you, if you've won, you'll see a direct message from me asking for your email so I can send that gift card over to you, okay? Last thing you want is someone to win and then not check their messages and miss out on the opportunity. So do go over to my Instagram and check that out. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you want two free stocks with Weeble, you can also click the link below for that deal as well. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.